Well, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this first uh, Te Puna Korero meeting of 2021. It's already the 4th of February. Um, just before we go into the meeting, can I just remind us all about using the microphone, your microphones when speaking. So turn your microphone on when you want to speak or you're acknowledged to be able to speak and off afterwards, please. And any staff that um, need to speak, there are a few microphones over there, but the staff over there, can you please come to the table if you're asked to speak so, um, so that we can all hear. That's great, thank you. So let's uh, get on with the meeting, which is now open. Uh, first item on the agenda is apologies. Uh, we have received no apologies. Oh, Taku. Oh, Taku has apologised. Thank you. We can just record that. Um, public forum, there have been no requests uh, to speak. Uh, conflict of interest declarations. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest that people want to declare today? I suspect not. So we'll move on to notification of extraordinary business, of which there are none. So item five is the uh, unconfirmed minutes of the Te Puna Korero meeting of the 10th of December. I will move those to put them on the table. Do I have a seconder, please? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Baker. Um, are there any points that people want to raise about those minutes? Corrections? If none, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. So that moves us on uh, to the reports that we have today. Item 6.1, which is the Puyarua City Traffic Bylaw Changes. Now, I'm going to take this um, report as read. It seems reasonably clear cut to me. Um, do we have any questions from councillors? Oh, sorry, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to move it to put it on the table. Um, and seconded by Councillor Morell. Thank you very much, Ewan. And I'll go back to my original asking for anyone that wants to make a comment or ask a question of officers. But nothing. This seems to be pretty simple, as I've said. Uh, I'll, in terms of um, of making some simple wording changes to align. Uh, this bylaw with what actually is happening in practice. So uh, unless uh, the, anybody from any of the officers wants to make any further comment, no? I'm now going to put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you. Uh, item 6.2, that moves us to, which is funding for Puyura Jobs and Skills Hub. We've heard about this through Kainga Ora and others for um, a great deal of time, and it seems to be actually about to happen. And we have an MOU, and uh, things are, are um, seeming to be moving to put this into place, which would be a good thing. Do I have any, anyone have any questions or comments? Councillors? Yes, Councillor Weehapi. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you for reminding me again. Oh, yeah, it's the new year. I'm moving the report. Do I have a second? Uh, yes, thanks, Councillor Trullin. Now, Councillor, we help you. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things. So um, I absolutely agree with uh, and support the objective. Um, it's a great opportunity, particularly around uh, the construction um, area, um, specific because it's not targeted just to one community entity, which is in this case is MSD. However, I do feel a little uncomfortable um, committing to 180k when we are still yet 
to see a solid plan and a solid commitment from Kainga Order. Um, particularly as, you know, they are in control of all those finances. And I know 180k might not seem a lot to people, but, you know, there are obviously lots of ways that we could help our people with that money. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is it's stated in the MOU, obviously it's an initiative, but each partner is listed as a financial contributor other than Ngāti Tōa. Is there a reason for that? Thanks, Kylie. Do I have... I'll pass over Who's to going to be? I'll yeah. pass over to Claire Nolan. She's our, okay, um, our lead on this piece of work. Need to just turn your microphone on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, it is intended that Nati Toa Councillor will become a partner in the program, but non-financial. They're going to provide support and expertise to the service provider who is being selected um, through the RFP process. And uh, can I just check that we're actually not committing to 180,000, we're only committing to 60,000 this year, and next year we'll be asked to commit another 60,000 based on how things go, is that right? We're being asked to sign the MOU which commits us to the three years funding. <clears throat> That's actually the point of the MOU, so that they have that funding um, secured. And uh, just the other question is that this funding is budgeted, yes? Yes, it is budgeted and it comes from existing budgets. Yep. So Kylie, do you, does that answer your questions? Okay. Uh, are there any other questions that Councillor has? Yes, Councillor Ford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my question was just around, uh, see that was based at Cannons Greek Shops. Where exactly at Cannons Greek Shop, or was it at the current existing community hub that's here? I understand, through the chair, I understand that it's the old um, TAB building oh, okay. up there that Kaingora have secured for it. Okay, and then my next uh, question was just around, in point three in background, how are we going to measure the expectation for point three. So you said they're going to be looking at local, Māori and Pacific are going to be employed. Once the service provider is selected, there will be a process working with them, which has been outlined in the tender document, um, around agreeing the KPIs for each year, which will target um, Māori Pacific women general. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. Just a further question. So... Just to clarify, how are we going to know that that has been met, those KPIs? Are we getting a report back to say um, this amount of numbers are going to be, uh, have been employed? We keep our presence on that um, advisory board and we can report back to council annually or, or more if required. Hey, uh, Councillor Duncan. Thanks, uh, Chair. I, um, my question sort of follows on from... Kylie's, and uh, that is, I note that we've signed up for three years, but Kaingora has signed a lease for six years, and looking for a further six years for that. <coughs> Are we really committing to 12 years of doing this? I, I couldn't comment. There has been no discussion with, amongst the advisory board members other than the three years, and it's three years in the MOU, so that is yeah. all the commitment that's been asked for at this stage. I might just add that the um, the three year point uh, gives council uh, uh, an opportunity for reflection and to um, decide whether it wants to continue funding if the schools hub is working and delivering on its objectives. So yeah, the three years is a stop and check. Further uh, question. Yeah, just one further question. Item two point two um, on page twenty. There's an item E, but nothing in it. Are we missing something there? I'm sorry. I so that's in the MOU. Yeah. I, uh, under uh, under financial liter literacy. So to item in 2.2, there's an E. It's probably a typo. I think it's uh, something we can let officers uh, deal with. Thank you for raising it, Councillor Duncan. <laughs> um, Councillor Sayuli. 
Uh, thank you. Um, just a couple of questions I've got. In, um, uh, in the introduction, point 10, it talks about RFP. What's the RFP? Request for proposal. Okay. Thank you. Actually, there's a, uh, just a comment on, on some of those abbreviations. Um, sometimes you've got to look before you can actually find it. So I just, I don't know where they... Because it doesn't mention it earlier, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, that's beside okay. the point. There's another question um, I have too regarding point two, and I think you might have covered it clear. You mentioned about, um, about Ngati Tor signing it in, in uh, point 12, but in point two of background, it doesn't mention Ngati Tor at all. So is that because initially in point two, it was only between us, uh, MSD and MB? Yes. Um, it's been considered that there would be a conflict of interest at this point for Ngāti Toa to be part of the advisory group who are doing the establishment um, because there is an intention that they will partner with the selected service provider. They will join the advisory group once that um, appointment has been made. Mm. But you're quite right. So this skills hub, because uh, if I remember correctly, Whitera were, were doing one Kaingaoro were doing, Ngāti Tō were doing one. So this kind of, are they like a, a skills hub kind of thing? Fiti Raya, to my knowledge, are not <coughs> doing one. Um, but um, Ngāti Tō have considered it operating a skills hub themselves. They will look at how they partner both together and work together. But they may have their own physical presence separate to the one in Cadence Creek. Okay. Thank you. Um, and also in uh, the MOU, it talks about page 21, it talks about, um, and point B, 2.4 point B, you talk about uh, it is anticipated that following completion of the procurement, representatives of Ngāti Toa and the local Pacific community and the service pro. Uh, my question is actually regarding the local Pacific community. Who who are those? Who are they? So an RFP, a request for a proposal, has gone out um, to it was placed on Gets, the government's electronic tender service. So my understanding is they received possibly about fourteen inquiries. They now have um, up to eleven proposals come in from a variety of organisations. And in that tender, there are requirements um, that they have knowledge and practice and be part of the Pacific community and have to partner with it and will partner with Ngāti Toa. So at this stage, it's still confidential who those um, people are because they're going through a selection process. So there's an assumption that local community, Pacific community will apply? Absolutely. And, and there's been significant consultation with that community about this proposal. Okay. Right. Are there any more questions, councillors? Oh, sorry? Oh, Councillor Hayward. <coughs> Kia ora, Mr Chair. Um, thank you for bringing forward this uh, proposal uh, and the MOU attached. Uh, some of the questions have already been answered, and I would talk to Councillor Wehapi's uh, initial commentary about the importance of trying to develop a pathway for, for Rangatahi to have jobs that are relevant here in Porirua. I have I had four questions. They're down to two, so that's good. Um, the first one is that this skill and jobs hub is based on the Tamaki Regeneration Hub. I'm trying to understand that that have a similar MOU in terms of the funding, and if it <coughs> did, was Auckland Council required to contribute towards that fund as well? <clears throat> Councillor, I can't answer. I'm sorry, that question. Um, I understand MSD are one of the, and Auckland Council, are the significant funders for that hub originally. I don't know what the funding arrangement is now. So my second question is, if we as a council decline to accept the MOU, will, in your opinion, the project still go ahead? Or perhaps if I broaden the question, will that affect any part of the kind of order relationship and any other, I hate to use this word, disputes that may be in play between KO and Purdue City Council? Disagreements perhaps might be a better word.
It, it will be a problem for the skills hub. It's, it's not a huge amount of money that we're contributing. We are the smallest funder, but it is significant. Um, and our participation is also significant because it is our community. Um, and without our funding, we won't be a participant. But I couldn't comment on any other okay. impact on the relationship. One more supporting question. Are you aware of the concept of a shakedown? I'll withdraw. Kia ora. Um, yes, okay. <laughs> I take it on that note. Um, I mean, I, I, I believe that, uh, you know, this is a good commitment and we are going to retain an overview here and it does show a commitment from Poirua City Council to Kainga Ora. And I think there are other mechanisms for dealing with other issues that will and are coming up all the time anyway. So uh, on that note, uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you. Uh, that moves us uh, to item 6.3, which is the finance report up to the 31st of December 2020. I'll put that motion, that report. I'll move it. Do I have a seconder? Thank you very much, Councillor Ford. Um, I, I am going to take this as read, but I, I think I'll ask uh, Graham to come and give us the... Oh, Joe, sorry. Yeah, it will, Graham might, might like to come to the table anyway because there may be some questions that he can ask. Sorry, Joe. Um, can you please uh, just give us the highlights of the report? So um, this is a report for the first six months of the current financial year. Um, from the operating position, uh, we are 2% behind what we forecast in the budget. The major driver of that was the um, repayment of the wage subsidy, which was not in the budget. Um, so our, net, our position before the plus and minuses were 2% um, behind, or 833000 So when you net off the um, wage subsidy, we're in a good position as we come to the end of the um, first six months. Our year-to-date um, forecast for the year, uh, we are forecasting that we will be 180 better than budget. Again, that does include the wage forecast, but what it doesn't include is the water reform. So we're working through the first six months does not have the water reform in there, and we're currently working through the allocation of the revenue for the water reform and the expenditure. Uh, in relation to capital, um, we are about 454, sorry, 4 mil, 4.5 million behind on budget uh, for the first six months, but we're for forecasting to be above budget at the end of the year. Uh, the reason for that is um, in relation to the water reforms coming in in the second half of the year and the land for resource consents. We're also asking um, at this, so at the moment we're tracking with um, variances throughout the first six months. We're actually asking at this um, committee to approve um, the budget um, transfers, um, budget adjustments, so that when we, for, when we report forward, um, we would have netted out the issues around water, um, water reform will come in. We'll also be um, putting in the wage subsidy um, looking at the changes for depreciation in relation to... So we've got some depreciation changes. We've also got the um, impact of the um, transmission gully um, roads for both CAPEX and OPEX. Um, they are the highlights. So if you've got any questions on the detail, um, Graham will be able to answer those. Thank you very much, Jo. Um, I'll now open it up for questions, Councillor. Yes, Councillor Morell. On um, page 34, um, item 15 or line 15, um, we talk about um, uh, under expenditure uh, by 3.1 million, but by the year ending half a million. Now, this is what work, um, you know, I always get a little bit concerned about um, the um, if we don't spend the money that we're allocated, what is the work that's not being done? Because in the sort of area of you know, the three waters, that's where we get the major slam from the community. And so I'm just wondering what work is not being done in that area. If 
So the report's currently yeah. saying that we're 3.1 million behind at to, as at today. Yeah. Uh, but we are expecting it to reduce by only 500 behind at the end of the year. So at the moment, we're tracking to deliver what is actually in our plan. Okay. It, it does also say it excludes water yeah. or water reform. Refer so so we will be fully expended. We're expecting to be fully expended on water of all the waters. Item 25, uh, it talks about risks and COVID. And I have to say, I'm still... A bit peeved, if you like, about the fact that um, uh, we our claim was um, not. You know, I understand the reasons, but I um, I am concerned, and I, I asked at the audit committee of of our auditors, who I know we pay a considerable amount of money to. Uh, it, it it concerns me that they thought that we were in a strong position. And uh, so where were they getting their advice from? I have to say that I'm not going to... Don't, you don't need to explain that. I'm just going to make that comment. But it, item 25 talks about other claims. Why make that comment? Potentially other claims um, that could come about because of... Uh, it's, this item is potentially raised further suspension or other claims against council for project under construction. It's item 34, and page 34, item 25. But, but before you answer that, I'll just point out that that's a completely two different topics you talked about there, the wage subsidy oh, no. and now but the, I just, the I, other potential. Well, the, the COVID was yeah. around wage. I just made that Let's comment. just make it clear Sorry. they're two yes. different things. Yes, so, I agree. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, through, through the chair, the most obvious claim um, that we've had is through the link roads. Right. And so I think we've previously told you that claim was over $2 million and we were working through that slowly with lawyers and wanting proof. So bit by bit, some of that's being signed off. But when that claim came in, it was for closure at, um, what do you call it, alert level four or three. The contractor also sent us a letter saying, putting you on notice, we're going to claim for alert level two and one. So we've yet to get any details, and again, we'll go through those pretty closely. Does that answer the question, thank Ewan? You. Yeah, thank you. Um, page 49, it talks about an underspend in parks and reserves. Um, again, I, uh, if you drive around the city, and I know uh, it's not all, only a reflection on us, it's also... Uh, uh, Wakataki, uh, who also have a responsibility, but our city's looking pretty shabby in some places, um, and um, I just don't think, would, would like to think that there isn't, an, it, we don't underspend in this area, um, and that, you know, we spend it because it's the maintenance of our city. If you drive into the city, if you drive around State Highway, if you drive around a number of places, we're, we're looking like we're overgrown. Um, and it never used to look like that. So I'm just making that comment. It's an opportunity to make that comment because there is an underspend in that area. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to through comment the, on Through that? the chair, two things there. Um, the roading network, um, State Highway 1 and State Highway 58, it's hammer to the... Um, you know, pedal at the moment, and there's a bit of work going on in terms of coordination with uh, power lines authorities, NZTA, regional council, and you're quite right, around Pukarua Bay, it's been very bad with warm weather and rain. And again, the parks team, from their perspective, um, we've had people away over the uh, Christmas holidays, but everyone's back, um, and again, foot to the pedal, going for it. So we've got people out spraying, weed eating all over the place. And some of the balance now is instead of complaints about weeds, it's uh, you're spraying and what are you spraying? So, but we're trying to balance that out with comms and signage. Thank you. Um, and then we go to page 60. Uh, and uh, just because it's been in the news of late, does anyone, can anyone give us an update of what is happening with Adventure Park? Uh, <laughs> councillors, we will be getting a briefing on that shortly. And I'm looking at Steve at this point. Um, yeah, there'll be an um, update coming to you in the next two to three weeks. Okay. You okay with that, Ewan? Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks for that. Further question? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, page 62, 
um, quite, uh, concerns me about Eastern Poirua, the regeneration, because I get the, and um, I see on page 50, uh, 63, funding uh, will be could be confirmed by May 21. So we, uh, I get the impression as a as a councillor that we've been mucked around here. Uh, that we've been given certain conditions and promises uh, with the uh, the government made or Kaiangaroa made, um, and they are backtracking on that or appear to be backtracking on that. And so, um, and uh, you know, I I didn't raise it under the subs under the um, works hub, but <coughs> I just get the impression that Kaiangaroa uh, Kaiangaroa is changing their tune. Uh, towards us, and I, um, you know, I think at some stage, um, I mean, I know we will we'll get regular updates, but I would like, um, yeah, I just need to. So I'm just concerned. What May 21 funding? What does that mean? May 21 is the question. Um, so, councillor, you'll be aware that the budget or the um, costs within the Eastern Porirua development have escalated. Um, as a num result of a number of things, but certainly as a result of some of the work that's been done on infrastructure requirements. So um, our understanding is that there's a budget bid in. Um, you know the government processes as well as I do, probably. Um, we we can There is you know a lockdown around what you know what information is available. Um, but we do know that um, officials within government are working on this issue. Um, there seems to be no shortcut here to um, getting the information in May. So um, we are hopeful that actually uh, the um, appropriate money will be um, available. But in the meantime, actually, the the program is going uh, full steam ahead, so certainly we know that we're expecting resource consents any day now for a number of the next tranche of housing. So there's no let up, um, you know, from the kind of operational point of view. Right, and the last one is page 70. Uh, well, there's just one other, no, two. The page 70 is the T, uh, is the uh, link roads. Um, and on top of page 70, it talks about issues with G, uh, Greater Wellington consents. You know, the bureaucratic nonsense that we have to go through for all these things and they take time. What's, what, what's the issue here in terms of the difference of opinion between them and us or between whoever and us? On this in this area, through, through the chair, I might just ask Daryl. Daryl, can you um, pop up to the microphone and just give us an update of, of anything you know about where, the consenting? Uh, good morning, through the chair. Um, it, it comes back to TG main alignment. Have had a lot of issues consenting wise with regional council. And the consents for that includes a link road is all bolted together. So our project's being considered as part of the bigger project. So regional council have become a lot more stringent on their approvals. And as a consequence of us being associated with the main alignment, which has had a very high number of infringements, we're being looked at with a fine tooth, tooth comb as well. So it's impacting on us. So it's just taking the contract longer to get sign off. Okay, so we're not, it's not our fault, it's... No, it's not our fault directly, but we're going to, we're getting the consequence of what's happening next door to us. Okay, thank you. All right, you finished with your... No, just one final one, sorry. <laughs> and it, it, I'm not sure where it aligns in the report, but here, I'm going to say it. Um, the central, the work that's been carried out in the wetlands at the moment here in the central city, I don't believe that the public understand the bigger picture of why we're doing that. And we are getting flack to say it's a, a nice to have, you don't need it. In my view, we need to get out there publicly and say why we are doing it. It's part of the overall picture of trying to address the, 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 the flooding issues. But they think at the moment, well, some do, that it's just a, um, just a nice to have. Um, I, I agree, Councillor. I think that um, 
there are a number of issues in the three water space that um, we are failing to communicate between Wellington Water and ourselves about the network issues and how each project contributes to um, resolving some of these issues. So um, we are working on that and we had a meeting earlier this week with um, our respective comms teams and operational teams to talk about how we can better do that. So um, we are working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Fourth in line, Josh. Thanks. I mean, that's a, that's a good point, Councillor Morell, and I just wonder whether something like that might not be solved by a, a nice sign there that at least people could read and, and see what was going on. And the, I thought we had talked about that at some They are, yeah. it is there, is it? I haven't seen it because there are pipes and stuff in the way, but yeah. Okay, right. Um, now, Councillor Hayward, you had some questions? Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Hitting him, uh, I could part ties, so apologies for uh, the length of these, but um, I hope you'll give me some latitude. We'll start off with page 60, Mitchell Stream. In the last uh, Te Puna Ōnanga meeting, I asked this question, and I didn't feel I got a satisfactory answer at the time, so I'm going to ask the same question again. For those who are watching at home, you can go back and check. One hour, two minutes and 20 seconds from the last meeting. Kia ora koutou. Here's the question. Is Council satisfied with the management measures it has in place to prevent further erosion? This is in regards to the section of Mitchell Stream between Kenapuru Drive and Pururua uh, uh, Stream. Uh, who yes. have we got to answer that? Yes, I think Through the chair, yes. Excellent, thank you. Uh, now, it's page 57, service requests for uh, dog control. Uh, it seems that there is an increased demand. It doesn't say anything in the commentary about whether or not we have capacity to handle that. Can I get someone to explain, explain that we do have capacity to deal with, uh, you know, a higher than, uh, than expected um, a number of requests? Do we have somebody that can answer that? Yes, I can answer that, and yes, we can meet it. Right, next, uh, same page, uh, noise complaints. I recall at the last Te Puna Oranga meeting there was discussion about working with the contractor uh, to provide additional resources to assist with re noise complaints being met within a timely fashion for our level of service. But there was a comment at the end of it which got me worried that, that there was a negotiation that had meant that we as a council would have to pay more. Can someone explain to me that if you ask a contractor to do a job and they're not doing it, that you ask them to do it, that they do it a different way and then you're going to pay more for it? It doesn't seem like it fits within what I would define the Consumer Guarantees Act. Uh, Nick? Through you, Chair. I'm not across the detail to be able to answer that question well. Can I go back and do some research and come back to you directly, please? Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next on um, page 58, Wellington Water. This kind of comes back to um, Councillor Morrell's point. Um, there's no commentary in here for Wellington Water. Um, that, that perturbs me. Um, if we're talking about communication, uh, the fact that we cannot get any additional commentary from Wellington Water does not help the public's perception about their responsiveness to these types of concerns. Can someone update me on where that is? So, Wendy, can you... Yeah, what, what specifically are you aren't asking, Councillor? We have Hayward? a document that was put on notice that has sections in there awaiting commentary from Wellington Water. I'm asking, does Council have any additional commentary since this document was produced in regards to, the, to those areas? Um, Andrew, do you know the background to that? I, through the chair, I don't think so at this stage. I think what the council is referring to, am I correct, you're in performance measures, your 58 is my 58, and what you're saying is the measure hasn't come through from Wellington Water. No, we're in ongoing conversations with Wellington Water about getting measures in a timely uh, fashion. Okay. Bear in mind that, you know, obviously, by association, our, our council's mana is affected by their performance as well. Uh, can I get to the next one, which is, can someone just confirm to me that the roving crew for I and I that we agreed to be funded in the annual plan is actually in place now, as they are working, they are on the ground now? Um, it's uh, not yeah. in place right now, but it will be by the end of the month, I understand. So they have been um, in establishment mode until this point. 
can can someone just when uh, the opportunity comes up that they are actually on the ground that councillors are just informed that that actually has happened? Yes, we will certainly let you know, and um, we will also need to do a bit of a public education campaign because mm. if people are knocking on people's doors. Um, we don't want it to come as a complete surprise to everybody. So there is um, there is some uh, public education we have to put in place. And just one more sup on that one, just because I want to be, you know, be clear about this. So we approved annual plan in June, July, somewhere around that point of year, certainly around that financial year, and we're, what, seven months later. Is the implementation of a phase for something like this considered to be normal in terms of this type of work? Uh yeah, it was due to start earlier, but for a number of reasons of which I'm not across all of them, um, that it hasn't been. So um, if you want to understand why that is, I'm certainly happy to get the answer for you. I appreciate that. Um, next is um, just page 61. Maybe it's a pendentary thing for me. Um, it says in its page 61 in regards to the funding um, for... Uh, the, uh, the funding um, request with Waka Kotahi that says it's not approved. Can I just be clear here? That means, because it could for me be read as declined, does that mean that it's not approved yet or we haven't heard a response yet to that application? Who's going to answer that? Uh, Stephen. Or Andrew. Is, is Daryl here? Daryl, do you know? I, I believe it's not declined. We're in a declined. process, but we'll get Daryl to confirm. Okay, thank you. Um, can I uh, also then go to um, page 65 with regards to the Titahi Bay, so the Onipota to Winila shared pathway. Can someone just explain why we would not, uh, is it normal that we would not bring a quantity surveyor in to do uh, additional uh, assessment at this stage? Or if not, what would be the reasoning why? Through the uh, chair, we're just watching our budget at the moment. So we've had pretty... Um, uh, detailed discussion about the value we would get from spending twenty to thirty thousand on a quantity surveyor right at this point of time, and we think our money is better spent doing some other components to get us to consent application. But um, it is trying to work within the budget. There is a just up, so, so, Mr. Chair. There's a, there's obviously a risk here that um, by leaving that down the line. Uh, the quantity surveyor comes back and says that actually the amount is that you're projecting is, is under-assessed. Uh, uh, and so that creates additional challenges in terms of gaining the revenue to complete this project. Through the chair, you're quite right. There are risks all the way through. And again, we also have examples where we've used quantity surveyors and by the time we get to tendering, the price is um, much higher as well. So we're aware of that. We're trying to um, tap into... Um, some of our own expertise, but we decided that we couldn't justify the 20 to 30k spend at this point in time. Okay, last part, Ty. Thank right. you. Um, this is uh, associated, but these reports don't seem to have any reference to the, uh, another contractor that does work f you know, within the constituents of Titahi Bay, and that is around the, the, the gate at the beach, uh, which we contract out. Do Does Polydiversity Council keep uh, information on whether that gate has been closed on time? Uh, the, the only way we could do that is to put some staff member down there to monitor it because we have no electronic means. Um, so we do rely, as with a lot of our operations, on people advising us if it is not um, being, you know, our, our, um, the closures aren't occurring in a timely way. So um, no, we do not have a monitoring regime for quite a lot of our work because it would double our staff. Is there a, a level of a issue then with regards to even quantifying the level of service that would mean that we, but we, if we can't even measure the level of service, then is there a level of service really regards to closing a gate on time? Uh, There's a level of service in our contract, and if we find out it's not being um, complied with, we take measures to um, remedy that. Let's let's move along from that, because I think that's a detail that could be dealt with outside this uh, room. Kia ora, Mr Chair. Right, you're finished with your questions, Councillor Hayward. Yeah. Um, Councillor Wehapi. Oh, it's tough. 
following that one, but mine's just quick. Just to let you know that. Um, in regards to page 32 and the view road regarding, in regards to the view road holding costs, um, it's just it's just a little all over the place and confusing to me. So I'm hoping that someone can explain it. Uh, we obviously budgeted for six months and that capacity has been used up and now we need to budget for another six months of holding. However, it was cut. It was uh, We didn't know what was happening because we possibly had a buyer and now we don't have a buyer, is that correct? Because the last time I believe we met in August, we decided that we would rent these out. So it's just a little bit all over the show if someone can comment. Andrew, can you through, answer that? Through the chair, we have a, party, a significant party that is interested in purchasing View Road, but it's not moving as fast as we would like. So at the end of the year, I gave the instruction to property to start work on getting uh, 11 of the units ready for rental. So the council spending money that it would rather not spend if we are going to sell the units. Uh, the 11 units should be ready for rental at the end of February. The party that's interested in purchasing the units knows that and still wants to uh, put forward an offer. We're waiting for that offer to come in. So we wouldn't go ahead and rent if they purchase, but I have to build in the costs that we're, we're um, incurring at the moment into the, into the purchase price. Council, are we happy? Okay, so my concern is that when we get to the end of the six months and then we need to budget for another 300k just to hold them for a potential buyer. I don't, I'm just I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, those costs, I think, would be but built... Through, through the chair, I'm happy, to, given it's a uh, commercial arrangement, I'm more than happy to update councillors in a public excluded environment, but because we're in a public environment, I've got to be careful about those negotiations. All right, Councillor, are you happy? Uh, Councillor Duncan. Thank you, <coughs> Mr Chair. Look... Um, uh, mine was the same thing with View Road there. That 300000 seems an inordinate amount. The, the, when I looked through those properties, they looked pretty good condition. I, I wouldn't have minded renting them as they were. Um, but the question that I have is, um, Winniera to Onipoto Shared Pathway, that's looking decidedly dodgy now, that um, the financing of that looks very scary, and, and I wonder what are the prospects for, for it actually. Uh, I'm not sure whether anyone can answer that question. It's on the... I think the only change, Mr Chair, since you updated pre-Christmas, was we were going to put in the application for a lotteries grant. Talking to the advisors there, they said um, there are some other um, projects of substance in for this round um, that will beat you. Hold off, keep going, get yourself a consent. Uh, you can see that they had 16 million to give away. Uh, the next round is in September, so we took that advice and thought we'll continue to keep working forward. And as I said pre-Christmas, there are other areas where we can go looking for funding, and and we were after from memory sort of about 3.5 million. So if there's a fund of 16 million, I'm hoping again in September there'll be a fund of uh, 16 million there to um, apply to. Does that answer your question, Councillor Duncan? Also answers the question about why I hold off on spending on a QS as well. Yep. So, uh, Councillor Trullin. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is in relation to the performance measures not meeting target from page 57, specifically around water, and, and I recognise that we're still waiting on some responses for some of these from Wellington Water, but I'm looking particularly at wastewater on 58 and water supply on 59, and the degree to which our results are missing, our targets is substantial on everything. Um, and in particular, I'm looking at like call-out times and urgent call-out times being 85% increase in the previous quarter's result. And I'm just wondering if we can speak to why it is that these are so dramatically out of sync 
and, and I guess I'm thinking about this in the context of I'm seeing all the issues with water, quite bad issues occurring in Wellington at the moment. And I'm, I'm wondering if this is as simple as a funding issue with Wellington Water or does it go deeper? And what action are we taking to improve on this? Fair question. Who? Andrew? Andrew? Uh, through the chair, there's quite a lot in that question. So um, I guess there's a methodology about how you set targets. And if, you're, if they have safety involved, you'll go for 100% or higher. Um, you as a council have had briefings from Wellington Water and they've asked you for more money and you've prioritised amongst yourself water well and truly above roading. Uh, so this is a council that is putting more money into water and, and trying to do better, but certainly acknowledge um, in terms of the budgets that are there at the moment, the conversation with Wellington Water is we're blowing OPEX because there are more water leaks than uh, we're budgeted to fix. Um, in terms of response times, they'd acknowledge that they're slower than they, they should be. But um, money is, uh, it's not a, a matter of this council not putting money towards it. We haven't given them as much money as they actually want, but uh, you have to measure off affordability. So um, you're certainly on a trajectory of trying to put as much money into that area. And I guess I'd just say to the side, the Plymouth and floods have highlighted that the package going forward, you've prioritised uh, drinking water and sewerage over stormwater. Your CBD um, uh, fix-up is the last major um, fix-up for um, stormwater. It was rated, stormwater was slightly lower on the capital work, and now that Plymouth and Floods has brought that into um, to a highlight. Um, so just to follow... Um, just to follow up on that, yeah, so, so I, I guess I understand in terms of us missing our strict targets on things, like it makes sense, for example, that for overflows that we aim for zero, so we're, uh, that, that, that makes sense that we're going to miss that because we want to aim for the best. Uh, I, I guess the more pressing concern is why recently we've seen such a, a dramatic increase in a short period of time on things like the response times and particularly on urgent things, um, you know, like an 85% increase from the previous quarter's it just it seems like something significant has happened there. Do we know why that's happened so recently? We'll get back to you, Councillor, and we'll um, ask the, uh, Wellington Water that question. Yeah, I think this is a, a briefing from Wellington Water in these areas. But I think we'll organise a briefing. Yeah, 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 that would, that would be good. Are there any other questions that councillors have? Uh, Not a question, just a comment or a... Oh, statement, I guess. A statement. Uh, not a statement. Not a statement. No, just furthering on from Councillor Trillin, um, you know, the water, I know that we've got a, um, a workshop after this, but I think that the water issues uh, have increased significantly in terms of what... Oh, oh hold on. Councillor Morell, I, if you're going to make that sort of statement, that's it's already been made. Those issues have, okay. have been made, All right. have been raised. Well, I'll make it in the workshop. Raise. I'll make it in the workshop. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I have uh, just a question, I mean, uh, similar questions to others, but in the district plan, um, we are talking about an increase of a million dollars to react to uh, um, what people have submitted over the next two years. Can you make a comment uh, ar around that and w whether that's in budget at the moment? Uh, so, I don't know what I didn't note. It's, it's, it's right at the end on page... Uh, is it? Uh, pre gosh, sorry. This is, this is District Plan 72, was it? Yeah, page 72. I didn't note the numbers. Yeah. Uh, can we have a comment around the... Yes, through you, Chair. It's The budget for the district plan was set quite a long time ago, and I think it's fair to say that we undercooked the legal costs and impact that would be required when we go through hearings and appeals. So we've received a record low level of submissions by comparison to other district plans by around 260. Most usually land somewhere in the 600 to 700. So we believe our intent to try to keep um, to keep out of the legal world 
uh, as much as we could has stood us in good stead. However, there's no doubt that we will still be pushed on some provisions quite hard. And as soon as lawyers and commissioners are involved, the costs are significant. I know. I'm so, not, I'm not, I understand yeah. that. So I'm we are, asking... So we're going to bring a detail... They're not budgeted, are they? No, they're not budgeted. We will bring, in the um, project space or district plan, our best indicative assessment and forecast of what we think the costs are likely to be based on the hearings and appeals to seek your input and approval for that. So that works to come. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, are there any other questions that people have about finances? Uh, if not, in that case, I'll uh, move that the report be approved. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. Uh, there being no other business, we will now close the meeting uh, at 9.21. Thank you, everyone.